20 years when she turned to her mother saying mother I know that you'll grieve but I've given my soul to St. John the gambler tomorrow comes time to leave where the hills cannot hold back my sorrow forever Dead men lie deep Round my door The only salvation That's mine for the asking So mother, think of me no more music method come on in you pickers today we are learning Towns Van Zant's St. John the Gambler this song was sponsored by Tim Boring thank you for sponsoring this song Tim bringing it to you if you go to mikesmusicmethod.com you can get access to the free tab of this entire tune that we're about to learn and you can sponsor the next song yourself this is a fairly easy Travis Pick tune not super easy, so always check out the Travis Picking playlist. Watch those first few in order, and you'll be ready to go. It's an invaluable playlist up there. Check it out. But this song is fairly easy. The only thing that makes it tricky is that it's in 3-4. So sometimes you got a thumb pattern that isn't back and forth. You're going across three strings. But by the end of this song, you'll know how to Travis Pick in 3-4. What we do here at Mike's Music Method is I take you note for note through the song. I tab this song out myself. I got a pretty good ear, but more so than better than my ear is my obsession, and I really get in there, and I make sure you guys have the best tab on the internet. Nets. Internets. And what we do here is just do a measure by measure breakdown. So timestamps are your best friends. They are down below. I'll have all the measures marked. Also, once we run through all the song and learn it, we'll talk about how to sing it and my tips for singing and playing at the same time. So that'll be timestamped below. And then at the very end of this video is me doing a slow run through of the song so you can practice with me. And again, the tabs will be up here, but they're also available at my website, mikesmusicmethod.com. Thanks again, Tim, for sponsoring this song. What a fantastic Towns tune. And I want you all to comment down below, what is the most depressing town song? I've heard people tell me this one. People have told me nothing. I think nothing is the most depressing. Waiting Around to Die, and then I've heard Marie as well. So of those four, unless you got another one that you think is more depressing, but those four are all pretty brutal. <laughs> Always a couple quick little notes. Um, check out my Travis Picking playlist, as I already mentioned, but also feel free to join the Discord. There's a great community there. I also do a weekly Thursday Zoom meeting where a bunch of dudes just kind of hang out. We talk music. We share different songs that we've been listening to. It's a very fun, great little group on, on the Thursday night Zooms. But in other words, I, I want you to, guys to be in touch with me. Send me emails, join the Discord. I'm here to help you and be your music teacher. My cover at the beginning was fairly unrehearsed, um, so we're all gonna practice it a bunch now together. We're gonna get really good at it and just nail this finger picking. So without further ado, let's do it. Capo's up on the fourth fret. Before we begin, check this out. Quite a bit of the song is on an A minor, and we have a three note thumb pattern. This song is in 3 4, so that might be a little bit tricky for some of you, so that's something to get used to. We're not doing the typical Travis pick back and forth, but the A minor, we're doing a three note thumb pattern. So if that's weird to you, you're going to have to spend some time there. Don't worry, I think you'll get it quickly though. Boom! Measure one, so we have that A minor, remember capos four, and we're doing that pattern I just told you. Five, four, three. Now let's add the other fingers here. We got five alone, then I'm pitching four and one, and here I'm gonna do thumb and middle. You could do your ring finger if you wanted to, but the middle's a bit stronger for most people, so we're gonna do that. Then immediately after I do that on beat two, my pointer finger is gonna hit the second string. So thumb alone. Pinch four and one, pointer finger does two. Then on beat three, my thumb's gonna go to the third string and I'm doing the middle again on the top one. So I'm doing the first and the third string there. Then back to the pointer. Really pretty. So beat one and then P 
pinch, pointer, pinch, pointer. One more time, five, four and one, pointer finger on two, then three and one, and pointer finger on two. Three, four. is that this is basically the entire song. A little variation on different chords, but that's the main pattern. So one, two, and three are exactly the same. Let's play it three, four. I counted to four even though it's in three, four, sorry. <laughs> so that's all the same. Now this measure is hard to tell if it's the bass in the recording or if the, the main guitar is doing it, but if you're playing it alone, it's really cool to add this bass note because it's pretty loud in the mix and a big part of the movement. So measure four starts the same, but after that last pinch, instead of going back to the pointer, I'm going to reach my left hand pinky here and just hit the third fret of the A string. So it's almost like a C chord there. So three, four, one. We're just using that as a walking bass line. A, C, D, up to the D. So one more time, three, four. And that next note measure five is an open D. And I'm gonna drive you nuts. I can't always help but just say two, three, four, even though the song's in three, four. So I'm sorry if I confuse you, but I know I'm, I'm gonna not catch myself and keep doing it. Measure five here, we have a D minor. I tend to do the pinky there but it really doesn't matter. Well, however you want to fret that D minor is fine because we don't really do anything fancy with it. So here the thumb pattern's easier. Four, three, three. I shouldn't say easier because sometimes it's more confusing when you're Travis picking to do the same note, same string twice in a row. But that's what we're doing there, four, three, three. So let's try the whole measure here. We got four alone, pinching three and one. Then my pointer finger goes to two. Then I'm pinching three and one again. Pointer finger goes to two. Pretty similar to the other uh, A minor pattern, right? So let's do it. Three, four. So let's do it nice and slow. Three, four, measure five. Same thing in six and in seven. And just so you know, guys, I'm, I would really practice prep work here. So if you know prep work, jump ahead a little bit in the video, but it's super important. Let's just take that D minor for an example. Um, I got my fingers all ready to go here. So middle is on the first string, pointers on the second, thumbs on the fourth. And what I'm doing, so that just fires alone. Then the moment I pinch three and one here, look, look what my, my pointer finger does. It's prepping. So the moment I fire these two, my pointer finger goes down, he's ready to go. And the moment I hit that pointer finger, I don't do this and then attack with these later. I hit that pointer finger and I get these prepped and ready to go. So do this tediously slow. When that pointer finger fires, these other two touch. And you wanna just do this dance get that as smooth and comfortable as possible. And I'm not going to lie, this, this could be weeks and months worth of practice because you'll notice sometimes how even though you're only moving your thumb, your pointer finger might move. Or when you use your middle finger, your pointer finger might move or whatever. So you really, when you do that, do it super slow. And the whole point is not to just do it slow mindlessly, but to really focus on economy of motion. Pay super close attention to what that right hand is doing. But as you're paying close attention, it's, it's crucially important to just keep it relaxed, right? Tension is the finger picker's worst enemy. You just tire yourself out when you get tense. So be mindful, go really slow, do it really relaxed. And I know that's not the fun work and there's nothing flashy about it, but it's effective. And I assure you tons of great players do this kind of stuff where they're relaxing, being mindful of, even though it's quote unquote easy, uh, to be mindful of all those details is not easy. And that's what we want to do. We want to take that easy passage. It may sound boring and easy, but in our mind, 
we're really, you know, preparing for when things get faster and harder in the future. That's my tip. So we'll, we'll get to the vocals here in a minute, but let's just breeze through. We already started the verse. The verse started in measure five. The intro is just that A minor part. And then, so after that D minor in measure eight, we go back to the A minor. Same thing. We're just going to cruise through this. Nine and ten are the D minor again. Three, four. Back to an A minor. Now here, let's take a second to look at measure 12. Now in measure 12, I'm hearing this, and periodically throughout the song, you're gonna hear this, where we have an and on that first beat. One, and, two, and, three, and. With the recording, with the bass and the other instruments, it's pretty hard to tell when Towns is doing that on his guitar. So I'm gonna leave that discretion up to you. You can make your arrangement busier. You can keep it sparser, however you want to play it. It's it's not drastically going to change, you know, the way the song feels. But this is something that I would say use your intuition on. I try to get these tabs as accurate to the original as possible. But here it's just one of these moments where, you know what I mean? It's hit or miss throughout the song, so I it was hard to get super specific about when it was happening. And it... I don't want to say that it doesn't matter, but you know what I mean. So you can insert that extra beat when you want to. But let's let's explain it first. We have thumb on five, then the pointer finger immediately does that second string. And that's all that's added. Everything else is as it was before. So instead of one, two, and three, and, now we have one, and two, and three, and. So we just spicing it up a bit. Measure 13, we go to a C chord. We pick it the exact same way that we did the A minor. It's just a C major, though. And here we got that again. Thumb, pointer, pinch, pointer, pinch, pointer. And the thumb's doing that cool little cascading line. Back to a D minor. And there we just have one, two, and three, and. New chord here, but picking's the same. An F chord in measure 15. So I'm doing it exactly the same as I did the D minor. Back to A minor. I think this is the moment where Tim gets a little buyer's remorse on sponsoring the song. He's going, ah, I just paid Mike to show me the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. Not really, but kind of. Um, sometimes you never know. You go in to learn a song, you think it's going to be simple, and you're just like blown away about how complicated it is. That usually doesn't happen, but it does sometimes. And then other times you think a song sounds really hard, and then you pick up your guitar and you're like, oh, he's, he's just doing that? Why, why did that sound like so cool and different? So you never know what you're getting into. But let's just keep going. And like I said, we'll put the vocals in at the end here. We are almost done with the whole tune. 17 back to A minor. One. Twenty six are both D minor, twenty seven, twenty eight A minor, then twenty nine through thirty two I think was the same as before C D minor F A minor, then thirty three we stay on A minor. Shaboom! The Mike's Music Method donation pitch. I think most of you know what this is all about, but if you're new to Mike's Music Method. It all operates on the value for value model. That means if you're broke is a joke, you don't have to pay and you still have access to this awesome content. A lot of young people, old people, people in financially tight times, financial dire straits, Mark Knopflers, those, those of you in financial Mark Knopflers, you can still access all the content, which is awesome. But... I, I, I spend a lot of time making these videos and if you guys want to see more of them, support is appreciated and needed because this is, as you can imagine, to tab out the songs, record them, edit it, it is a true labor of love and I put a, a lot of hours into it every week. So th this is the value for value model. Maybe every time you learn a song, you're giving me 20 bucks. Maybe you're consuming so much of my content that it's like a private guitar lesson. So maybe you're giving 150 bucks a month. 
I have no idea. It's the value for value. Um, but the best way to support, honestly, is is sign up for a monthly support, either on PayPal or Patreon. Um, also on my website, the memberships, you can do the two, two token tab. You can do the uh, Mississippi John Nickler for five bucks a month. You can do the, the Atkins plan for 14 bucks a month. But I give you multiple options. They're all at my website, mikesmusicmethod.com. You can also snail mail me a check to my P.O. box. That's cool too. So whatever the value for value is, if you guys are getting a lot of value, I've had other people send me beautiful artwork. I'm going to reveal some beautiful artwork soon. It's really beautiful. It's actually sitting right here in this box. But I have to get a frame for it because I'm, I'm nervous. It's, it's quite beautiful. I have other beautiful artwork that I'm going to hang back up. Maybe I'm going to go back with the white wall. Should I do the white wall again? Anyways, this is a donation pitch, not like the, the live stream chat. But that's it, guys. It's the value for value model. Please, if I disappeared from the internet, you might go, oh, man, I could have given Mike 20 bucks a month or five bucks a month or whatever it is. But, you know, just know a little bit goes a long way. And that's what I'm trying to encourage people. Even if I had like a third of you guys giving who, who are regular who are visiting the website and downloading tabs, even if I had a third of you all giving five bucks a month, like I could make this my day job and really be giving you, you and everyone else, amazing content. So one more way to frame it is every time you donate, think of it as like a charitable act. By you doing the value for value and giving, it's ensuring and keeping it free for everybody else. So by you giving means there's no paywall for other people who just can't financially support music in their life. I think you get it. I'll stop rambling. Onward with St. John the Gambler. To everyone already donating, thank you guys, for real. It means a lot. And thank you, Tim, for sponsoring this tune. Four, we got this really cool classic Towns walk. He does it in nothing as well. It's his little E minor turnaround trick. We got the E minor. He moves that bass note. So I got E minor open, then I'm pinching four and two with thumb and middle. And then pointer fingers. Pinky's going down on my left hand, third fret on that low E string. Now, if that's hard for you, there's no reason you couldn't, in this instance, this context, rethink your E minor. Because we're never hitting the fifth string, I suppose the entire time you can just play the E minor like this. You can do your middle finger there so that when you do that low note, it's your ring instead of your pinky. That would be totally fine too. Now, check this out. I'm adding another pointer finger there, so I'm doing thumb. Thumb middle, pointer, thumb on that third fret low string. And then it's up to you if you want to go back to add another pointer at the end or just let that low note ring. Again, on the recording, it's pretty darn hard to tell. The guitar is kind of quiet with all the other stuff happening. So here's with the extra note. Three, four... is that whole thing repeats, right? We just go from five to 36, verse, 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 verse. Then at the very last verse, we just tag the ending again, and that is 37 to the end of the song. Good news is even there, there's nothing new. Let's just look at it. 37 is the C chord. D minor. F. A minor. A minor again. Here we have that cool E minor note thing back to the A minor and it just ends on A. Let's talk about singing it. We'll do the slow run throughs. The only thing I realized playing it here with you guys is that now when I go back and listen to the recording that bass is so loud that it is hard to tell if there's more walking bass notes that Towns is doing or not. I think I caught most of them um, and I think the bass is just kind of doing the other ones but I know on that E minor and at the intro he puts that C in when he's going from the A minor to the D minor. Perhaps that happens more often this in the song. Hard for me to tell. But that's it. Let's learn to sing this thing. Let's sing the thing. So to play it and sing it at the same time, we are just going to start with a basic strum. This is what I always recommend to people. And what I would do is just maybe get used to the thumb. Like, can you do that three note pattern while you sing it? If that's already too complicated, then simply strum through the song. 
remembrance in 3 4. But she had 20 years when she turned to her mother, saying, Mother, I know that you'll grieve, but I've given my soul to St. John the Gambler. start there. Once you get that down, you can just do the thumb part. Well, she had 20 years when she turned to her mother, saying, Mother, I know that you'll grieve, but I've given my soul to St. John the Gambler. Tomorrow comes time. Surely you add all of it. Well, she had 20 years when she turned to her mother, saying, Mother, I know that you'll grieve, but I've given my soul to St. John the Gamble. with you that's the idea baby steps on into it if you haven't seen the movie what about bob just youtube baby steps okay baby steps into singing baby steps with the thumb baby steps baby steps if bob could do it you could do it just baby steps slow runs we're just gonna do the whole thing from the top because it's pretty straightforward so not sections, let's just literally go from the beginning to the end. One, two, three. Baby steps into St. John the Gambler. <laughs> well, the wind howled high round the mountain's breast, and I should have just took baby steps down the mountain in search of a certain St. John the Gambler. I should have urged him to baby step back home. To a funeral drone of Calico. Why is that line so cool? Like, it shouldn't be that cool, but it just sounds so nice. It's like a Bob Dylan line. To a funeral drone of Calico. Does that sound as lovely to anyone else as it does to me? I, I love that lyric. I, I don't even know what it means, but I love it. Just, just the sound of it. <laughs> 